okay so we are clear about the sampling from uh, sampling frame the next step is talking about the sampling methods what methods are available to select the respondent from the sampling frame okay so here we have different possibilities there are poss possibilities as a probability sampling and non probability sampling okay remember when i talk about the probability sampling it means that the options or the possibility of being selected is equal for all your elements in the sample frame remember it is possible to be selected if you are part of this population it means that they are it, everyone have equal chances to be selected as a respondent okay so this is called probability sampling but obviously probability sampling have multiple method the first method we are talking about is simple random sampling if you generate for example consider this population and if you want to identify your sample on the basis of simple random sampling it is just like you have randomized the number and you have just selected any uh, respondent based on your study okay so based on your randomization procedure this procedure can be done online using random number generation you can use this on excel sheet you can use this as a randomizer on a website it is available or you can use or you can uh, use draw for example simple draw which we Uh, use at our homes uh, just uh, you can use those draws or you can use any method through which you can randomize your population is called your random population or random uh, simple random sample so when you selected sample based on any procedure through which you have randomized your population or your sample frame in order to collect your relevant sample is called simple random sampling you can use randomizer as it is a website web based application you can use word uh, excel excel also have random number generation and also you can use simple draw as your uh, as we we know very simple page draw so you can use those draws to uh, select your sample this is called simple random sampling so we use this sampling because we need heterogeneous sample so sample which cover all the characteristics of our population so we draw randomly in order to collect the more heterogeneous or more uh, segregated uh, sample from our uh, sample uh, frame so this sample should be the true representative of your population so if we select them randomly it is highly possible they would be uh, truly representation of your population and then we have another method we call it systematic sampling it is a bit difficult uh, in order to operationalize but i will explain each and every step involved in this systematic uh, sampling it is not unlike uh, random sampling it have a complex process but don't worry it's very easy to operationalize but you have to understand some uh, basic concepts so when we talk about the systematic sampling systematic sampling you have to use a number k in order to identify your true sample so what is k is k is basically a ratio what is a ratio k is basically a ratio of your population and divided by your required sample for example here i give you example we have population of 400 people and our required sample is 100 so i have to determine the k so k should be 4 because the formula is very simple the formula is population divided by sample required so when i divide this i get this number 4 so 4 is k so that is why it is called k systematic sampling so what we need to do now this is our population consider this is our population and we have a sample number or k number 4 so how we can operationalize we need to collect 100 people from this population so what we can do is we can just continue with our first number just count this one first this is first then second then we go to third and then we have fourth so what is our k k is fourth so it means that every fourth element 
of your population would be selected. This is how this K systematic works. So you can see that I have selected this number four. Now let's move on. So then four, we have five, six, then we have seven, and then we have eight. Now the next number we are going to select is eight. Okay, so this is because the K is four. So that is why this is eight. So this is also being selected, okay? So once we selected these all element based on the K, so this is how we do our systematic sampling, K systematic sampling, okay? We have selected every fourth element or every fourth subject available in our population or in our sample frame, okay? This method is applicable when you have list of your participants, when you have list of your respondent, when you have list of your subjects or you have any categorization of your uh, subject so in that case you can use this k systematic sampling remember in some cases uh, we can use this k with replacement for example uh, the fourth element is not available so what we can do we can do replacement or without replacement for example let me uh, get back to this number again so for example this one is our selected fourth element okay now when we go to interview or we when we go to uh, collect data from this respondent we can have two options whether if this person is available it is okay but if this person is not available then we have two different options to deal with that situation either we skip this respondent and move to eight number so this is called replace me without replacement so we will not replace this one and we will continue with our next respondent but in some cases we must need to collect data from each number so that is why we need to replace this number so what we can do we can use next one the fifth one would be our next respondent okay so once we have fifth one it means that if we can collect data from the next person and then we continue for uh, number so then uh, not eight would be our next number would be nine our next number in some cases or in some cases we can just uh, use simple replacement so replacement is possible within this uh, method of uh, uh, sampling okay so this case systematic sampling we can use widely in our research especially when you are doing marketing research for example you want to interview every fourth customer you want to see uh, or you want to collect data from the person who is entering in a mall. For example, we say every fourth uh, respondent. Okay, so this is a true representation of your case systematic sampling. So when you have all this data, you can just use this number K in order to get your exact sample. Okay, so this is case systematic sampling. Now let's move to another sampling procedure which is called cluster sampling sometime our population is basically divided into some geographic locations or on some other characteristics for example here you can see that if i say all these people are living in different street numbers so each street is our cluster so street one cluster one street two cluster two and then so on so this is all these numbers are uh, available for example based on different geographic locations so when you can divide your population based on some uh, geographic criteria or some other criteria but mainly it is geographic criteria and you can divide your population remember within the cluster population is heterogeneous so you have not divided them based on any characteristics okay you have divided them based on any clusters okay so when we divided them based on any cluster, it means that each cluster consists of heterogeneous population. The population is different. You can see in each cluster, all type of people are available, okay? So that is why we use cluster sampling. Now we can collect any random sample, or for example, if I want to collect 100 sample, and then I can collect three or I can choose three uh, clusters from uh, these all clusters. So these three clusters can be selected randomly based on any number 
generation. So you can use this random sampling technique in order to select your cluster. And if you want to collect from one cluster, you can do it from one only, okay? So remember, within the cluster, the population is heterogeneous. They have difference, they have uh, different uh, characteristics from each other. So all these people are involved in one cluster or available in one cluster. So that is why the population is truly heterogeneous and that is how we do the cluster sampling, okay? So cluster sampling mainly on geographic uh, location. So we can do this type of pop, uh, sampling when we are dealing with the different type of banks, we are dealing with the different regions of pop, uh, SMEs or something like this. So you can use all these uh, cluster sampling for this method. But remember, if we divide them geographically, it is clearly a cluster sampling, okay? Unlike with cluster sampling, we have stratified sampling. Now, stratified sampling is, uh, mm, I say likewise, uh, it is truly opposite of uh, cluster sampling. Why it is truly opposite to the cluster sampling? In this population te uh, sampling technique, what we do, we divide our population based on some criteria. Here is some stratum. There are some different types of the strata available in this. We call them stratum or strata. Okay, so you can see that the different types of the people, they have been selected based on their uh, similarity. So this is called strata. Within the strata, population is homogeneous. Remember, you can see that all these people, they are in one stratum, they are same. They have same characteristics. When we can divide our population, based on some characteristics and they are same within this data so that is called a stratified population okay now you can see that i have divided all my population based on different stratums now so these stratum basically they can act like a set of people with having similar characteristics for example football players cricket players hockey players red color ball green color ball so all these are examples of uh, homogeneity within the, the uh, strata okay so within the population it is homogeneous but the main objective is still same we want to collect a heterogeneous sample because we want to see everyone in the population representing okay so that is why we we need heterogeneous uh, sample so this is the same for stratified population also so stratified sampling technique we want to collect basically heterogeneous population so what we can do we can select a, a, a proportionate sample from each strata so this is how stratified population or stratified sampling works so what we did we collected two people from each stratum and then you can see at the end of the day we are having a completely heterogeneous population or heterogeneous sample for our study so that uh, they are truly representing the population because no uh, simple uh, characteristics have been missed in here so all these people are working uh, in the different strata or work uh, uh, affiliated with the different stratum but we have selected a sample of proportionate people or proportionate stratum from each strata so as a result, you can see that the population is truly heterogeneous, which is the purpose of our randomization, okay? So, you can see that we divided our population on some characteristics, based on some characteristics in some strata, and then from that stratum, we have selected a proportionate sample to collect a truly randomized and heterogeneous sample. This is called uh, your stratified sampling. But remember, uh, with this, we, we have another method where we can use all these different types of the uh, sampling strategies within the levels. We call it multi-stage sampling. So at level one, at level two, we can have different methodology or different selection method. And in level three, we can have so different uh, selection. Usually our population and the sampling procedure is divided into multi-stages. 
So that is why each stage we can select different respondent. For example, if you want to collect data from uh, managers of SMEs. So SMEs is your first level, selection of SMEs, because there are a lot of SMEs, you cannot uh, interview them all. So you have to select a few SMEs. In that case, you are doing first level of multi-stage sampling. And then from those SMEs, you have to select the people, the respondent. It means that this is the second stage of your sampling procedure. So usually if you consider we are doing multi-stage sampling. So in multi-stage sampling, you can combine any two method or more than two method in your sampling procedure. Here I give you one example of different stratified sampling sorry uh, clusters we have selected the cluster as we selected previously but here from this cluster we can use stratified sampling because we have to select a very few numbers so what we can do you can see here we can use uh, systematic sampling in order to collect our second stage employees okay so first we cluster them and second we can use a simple uh, uh, st uh, sorry systematic sampling but remember any of two types can be combined together to get a multi-stage sample it depends on how you rationalize or how you operationalize your research and how you operationalize your sampling strategy you can combine any two methods in the population sorry uh, within the sampling procedure so this is called a multi-stage sampling procedure okay and remember we can also uh, combine um, probability and non-probability method it is not necessarily all the time we have to collect or we have to combine uh, randomized methods on each stage we can use non-randomized uh, or non-probability methods and then probability methods also okay so this is all about the probability sampling